Army because of the executive status accorded to him as chaplain. He was given access to information documented in his eye-opening book, The Energy Non-Crisis, unfortunately out of print. Because to understand what's happening now, you got to read that book. And everything in that book from 1980 that caused oil execs to get fired, you name it, now it's all plain view admitted. After numerous public speaking engagements in western states, certain government officials or concerned individuals urged Williams to put into print what he saw and heard, stating that they felt this information was vital to national security. And actually, Ken Fromm actually helped him rewrite the book. He wrote part of it. That was the Atlantic Richfield head of operations. Mr. Williams firmly believes that whoever controls energy controls the economy, thus the energy non-crisis. Now, Ken Fromm died back around Christmas of cancer. We can now say it's Ken Fromm. I knew it was Ken Fromm. So did uh, other people like Dr. Stan Monteith. Monteith's the type to not, even though he believes Williams to go off what he's saying, he went and figured it out and called him himself. He's, he's also talked to the other guy who's living, was a former oil company CEO, big three. And there's been a strategic plan. And, and as we go to Lindsay, I want to break it down to you this way. But Zygmunt Brzezinski writes books saying they work in 25 and 50 year plans. David Rockefeller, in his uh, book he wrote five years ago, where he admits they want world government. I forget the name of it. Will you Google uh, David Rockefeller's uh, autobiography? I want to put it on screen. It's a side shot of him on the cover. Um, we've got it back there. But it, on page 400 and what, 35, it, he talks about how, yes, we're going to get rid of sovereignty. Yes, we're going to do this. But they talk about 25 and 50 year plans. And an example of that, because the general public has been taught, oh, Wall Street thinks in quarters. No, they get you to think in quarters, so you're blind to the larger geopolitical, neo-feudalistic, neo-mercantile system that is the New World Order. But in the 70s was a key catalyst for the next 50-year plan. That's when these decisions were made. And I've read Rockefeller, I've read Kissinger, I've read Brzezinski, basically say almost everything but in a veiled way that Lindsay's been told. That's the key. I can verify all this separately. Just Williams is directly talking to these folks. Now, and the info Lindsay gives us mirrors what we get from inside Bilderberg. But here's an example. I'm listening to WOAI this weekend. And they had a newscast about the 50-year water plan for Texas with the federal and state government and how we were 20-something years into the last plan and they're going to reassess it and launch a new 50-year plan off the old plan for, for uh, water wells, reservoirs, desalinization plants on the coast, on and on and on, and, and how the, the federal government's doing tests right now with desalinization of saltwater aquifers as a test as part of the 50-year plan. We are on 50-year time frames with subsets of 25, where sometimes they readjust or reassess. And so talking to Williams last night, I'm going to give him the floor here in a moment, when he briefed me on this, everything he was saying, again, was already public intelligence, but they were filling in the missing pieces. What Williams wrote about in 1980, about the secret deals with Kissinger and the Arabs to buy T-bills, and how... At a time in the future, they would shift to the global currency. That's in Trilateral Commission documents from 1975. But people would laugh at Williams about that. Now all of, of the previous part of the plan is public. He's going to give you the rest of the plan and what the globalists are telling him is, is going to unfold. Now remember, Lindsey Williams was here in October, in November, in December. And in October, on record, we wrote articles about it. Oil in the next year, six months to a year, to go to 150 to 200. Turmoil in the Middle East, not even so much war. He said they told me turmoil. That's on record. Destabilization campaign. And that that would then lead to, to quote, China, watch the big one. Now the other big oil company, former CEO, is giving him the full breakdown of this program in the Middle East, what it's going to do in the U.S., what it's going to do in Asia, and the rest of the globalist blueprint and layout for what is about to happen in the next several years and the decade uh, preceding it or following it. And so now, Lindsey Williams, I'm going to attempt to give you the floor. Um, and in, in fact, you're going to be hosting the show, uh, at least for this segment and the next. Uh, I'll take you out at break, but I'm going to actually go in the control room, only way I can control myself. And I'm going to be in there taking notes on points and questions I have for you. But 
I sat there for 30, 45 minutes with you last night and just shut up while you talked, and it was 10 times more powerful than anything we've ever done on the radio before. Lay it out. Let's start at the beginning. Alex, you're a gentleman. Thank you so very much. Crude oil this morning is up $8 a barrel. Libya, the capital city, Tripoli, is burning. The capital building in Libya is on fire right now. Gaddafi is in power since 1969. And this morning, light, sweet crude oil is $108 a barrel. I have been told that it's going to 150 to 200. I would think that 200 would be more like it. Libya has shut off all of its present oil sales. It says it will carry no more contracts. 1.6 million barrels of oil per day go to Europe, not to America, but to Europe. This is going to drastically affect America because now Europe oil supplies have got to come from somewhere else. I would say that the Middle East is pretty much uh, number one item right now. It's going to go to Iran, and it's going to go. The, the crisis is going into Saudi Arabia. So let me begin, as I have been told by the people that have given me information over these years. As Alex has just said, I want to start from the beginning so you can understand because this is very involved. In 1901. The first, what should we say, gusher of oil in the United States of America took place in Beaumont, Texas. It was called Spindle Top. It went up 200 feet. At that point, the major oil companies were formed. They didn't ex exist before 1901. Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, of course, which is a Rockefeller family, and Chevron had their beginning at Spindle Top in 1901. This set the stage for the beginning of some things that would revolutionize the entire world and the use of crude oil and energy. Then in 1903 came Henry Ford, the first assembly line automobile in America, and then a man by the name of Mercedes in Germany built the first assembly line German-produced automobile. Now... At that time, American oil was 25 cents a gallon or less. And our economy was booming beyond everything the world had ever known. Oil was discovered in the Arab Middle East world. Now, keep in mind that prior to the time that oil was discovered after 1903 in the Arab world, that the Arabs were nothing but nomads roaming the deserts riding camels. But 60 years ago, the Arabs began to, for the first time in many, many centuries, to come to the forefront. This brings us up to where we are now. And as Alex has suggested, I want to just cover a few pointers, and then I'll go back and take each one of them individually so that you can know the intricate parts of it. Uh, Ken Trom of Atlantic Ridgefield. This is Standard Oil. Of course, you recognize Arco, Atlantic, Richfield, Standard Oil Company, uh, one of America's greats back in those early days. And the, 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 the different oil companies, uh, Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, and Chevron, basically divided up the, the Arab world. And each one of them took a country and said, we will go and produce the oil fields in that country. The Arabs didn't have the money to produce them. And Mr. Ken Fromm was given the job by Atlantic Richfield of producing the oil field in Kuwait, Dubai, and that part of the world. Ken Fromm is a gentleman who has given me so much information over the years. We've spent hours and hours together talking about what is happening in the Arab world, and which I'll go back and give in detail later. Now, about 1977 through 81 was the Carter administration. You'll remember that the... Um, the Secretary of State was Mr. Henry Kissinger. He traveled abroad to every major oil-producing country at that time and tried to cut them a deal. I will go into that deal that he cut and why it is so significant to what's happening in America right now. Because at that point, we began the indebtedness of the United States of America by a design plan, and I'm so glad that Alex mentioned the 50-year cycle because this is exactly what we are going through at this time. 
Uh, I had not thought of that, but Alex, you're right, and I have heard this in many places. At this point, OPEC uh, had an agreement, and there was every nation in OPEC, every major oil-producing country in OPEC, uh, agreed to Henry Kissinger's deal with the exception of two. One was Iraq, and that's the reason that Iraq had to be conquered and uh, taken out, and the next one was Iran. Iran has had every kind of problem imaginable because they would not go along with Mr. Henry Kissinger's agreement back in 1977 through 81. Now, at this point, America began its debt spiral, and someone needed to buy the United States debt. Mr. Kissinger knew this, and as a result, the part of the cutting of the deal was that they would buy our T-bills, buy our debt. In turn, we would buy their oil, and at this point, it was decided by the elite that the American oil fields would not be produced. Folks, I hope you're hearing this because it's so significant to what they have told me now is about to happen. The American oil fields would not be produced because the foreigners, we had to buy our oil from them in order for them to turn around and buy our national debt, and they had to keep it that way. They closed up oil wells everywhere. They shut down major production from the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. What was the Bakken Oil Preserve and others here in the Law 48? They likewise said we cannot produce them because if we do, then these other countries will not be obligated to buy our debt. This also began the time that the elitists, the bankers and others, the World Bank, the IMF, began to bring about the destruction of America gradually. You've heard me speak of the Devil's Messiah plan. Every bit of this fit into their perversion of the United States of America. Then came 1970. I'll just give you a quick overview, and then we'll go back since we have time in the program today to take these one by one. In 1970, the Alaskan oil was found, somewhere around 1970. In 1974 through 76, the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline was built, and in 1976, one of the largest oil fields ever discovered in the world, and in particular in the United States of America, it's described in my book, The Energy Non-Crisis, Gull Island Will Blow Your Mind. This is a story within itself because after Gull Island was brought in, I was in the room with the oil company officials, I later asked Mr. Fromm, why don't you bring this oil to the American people? I, had, I knew already why. They couldn't. They had no choice. They could not bring gasoline back down to 25 cents a gallon again. They could not bring it to 50 or 60 cents a gallon. They, they couldn't because they were, the, the national debt had to be bought by someone. The Federal Reserve was obligated, and, and the national debt was growing so greatly, and now... Gull Islands brought in, and I said to Ken, why don't you bring this oil to the American people? He said, Chaplain, this is classified. We are not going to release that oil. We will never announce the oil field and the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, what is there, until, please, this is so important, put it down in your notes. You're hearing things today for the first time. He said, we will not produce these oil fields until... We have crude oil to somewhere around $200 a barrel. I said that in different places. It got me in trouble. I later was called on the carpet by the elite, and I was threatened. And it was mainly because of this one subject right here. They had to get it to $200 a barrel. You are going to see 150 to $200 a barrel oil in the very near future. You're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 to 12 months. They have to take it there because the problems that have developed, they developed them, by the way. The problems and the crisis that they have developed in the Middle East will grow so great until America will not be able to get its oil from the OPEC oil-producing countries of the Middle East and Saudi Arabia in particular. Because now, Lindsay, that, l l l Lindsay, I want to back up for just a moment. And again, just let listeners know, the new information is coming up. There's new information that deals with how this is going to be played off against the U.S., how China's involved, what the elite have told you, the role 
for the United States is going to be in this. We can already see this in their admitted globalist plans, but this is directly relating to what's happening now in the Middle East that you predicted from your sources in October of last year, four months ago, on this show. And, and so the really big bombshells are coming up, but it's important for people to have the foundation. Please continue. Yes, you, you're exactly right. Uh, all of this fits into the total picture of China, where Mr. Prom told me before he passed away, he said, China is the big one. Keep your eyes on that. But now the other sources filled that in for you. Yes, the other sources just filled this in for me. I think the, the, the bombshell at this point that folks you definitely need to jot down is once they get that crude oil to the price of somewhere around $200 a barrel, at that point, they will have created so much chaos in the Middle East. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, Libya, Tripoli, the capital building in Tripoli, in Libya, is burning right now, this moment, as we speak. In fact, this morning, Iranian warships went through the Suez Canal. Egypt finally gave them permission. Right now, as this program is going on, uh, the latest information I've gotten this morning is that the Iranian warships are through. This is going to involve Israel. That part I don't even want to go into on the program because it would be a program within itself. But once Well, Lindsay, we got time. Stay there. But, but we're going to discuss this entire strategic program and the next steps in it and where it's going to lead us if we don't expose this system. This is the end of America as we know it if they're able to do this. Now remember, Lindsey Williams, six months before oil three years ago, went from $50 a barrel roughly to upwards of 150 said it was going to happen, and named dates. We got similar intel out of Bilderberg that year. Then Lindsey said, now it will go down to 40. It did go to 40. People laughed at him when he said it. It went from 150 to below 40. Then he said, for the next two years, it will only gradually go back up. But then he said, in two years, and that was two years ago, then watch for things to happen. Then he was told, when the Middle East starts blowing up, get ready, but then watch China. Now he's been given the full plan, which, again, when I hear it, it's, it's, it, it's there. It's confirmed separately through research, but this is from insiders. Now, he said this four months ago. Last night, he briefed me on this. Uh, now, today, in fact, I had the articles out there during the break. Here it is. We'll put them on screen for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. They're up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Medvedev, revolutions could lead to disintegration of Middle East. PrisonPlanet.com. That's also an AFP today. Medvedev warns fanatics will take over Middle East. See, they don't so much run the fanatics. They spurred them on, helped them. Google admits that they were uh, involved in all of it, the State Department. And they're just going to let them run wild and go crazy. But it's not just so that the oil gets disrupted, so they can now, and that's what, this is the big one, that because that, I've got all, three pages of notes, Lindsay told me last night, that they're, that they're going to cheat the Arabs and stop doing the deal where they don't allow production of the big wells here in the U.S., not just Alaska. So it's not just that they're going to be in so much turmoil, that's going to be the excuse, and then they're going to cheat the Arabs on that deal, then they're going to stop buying the T-bills, and that's going to further kill the dollar, and that's the biggest one, is that they are planning to kill the dollar, and he's been given the time frame on all of this. That's the big new giant uh, information. Not from Ken Fromm, told him similar things before he died, from the other Mr. X, who was an actual CEO of the big three. Uh, please continue, Lindsay. I had no way of knowing any of this. Let me be very frank and upfront with your listening audience. I was a mere missionary flying airplanes out in the bush of Alaska at the time they said they were going to build the Trans-Alaska oil pipeline. The oil companies allowed me as a chaplain, later gave me executive status. I sat in the board meetings and lived with the elite of the world for three years' time. I could have never known any of the things that Alex has just mentioned had it not been the providence of God. It gave me favor with two of these individuals who are of the elitist of the world, and they in turn give them, have given me information over these 35 years, and the latest one who is still alive, but yet retired, still gives me information. And when Alex called on yesterday, his producer, I said, here's what I've just gotten hours ago, and that is just what Alex said. Uh, they are going to, um, th they're going to cross the Arabs. Uh, the Arabs will lose what they've put in our T-bills. The dollar is going to plummet. It, it, and I've given the time date. Uh, this was given to me. Please put it down on your calendar. 
By the end of 2012, the dollar will be dead. At the same time, all of these T-bills, securities, Federal Reserve notes that the uh, all producing countries of the Middle East in particular, under the agreement uh, by Mr. Henry Kissinger way back 1977 through 81, the agreement that was made, all of these millions and billions of dollars that they have put into American paper will be lost overnight at the time that they are going to plummet the dollar. This means that we will not be getting Arab oil. Folks, are you, I hope you're getting this. I hope it's sinking through. You will not be getting oil from the Middle East at the time this happens because they will be enraged with us, plus the fact, the fact of the Muslim Brotherhood going nation after nation after nation as it did in Egypt, as it's doing in Libya. It's going to go from one nation to the other, Jordan, Tunisia, Turkey, Kuwait, Yemen, Saudi Arabia. Morocco. And when it, when you, when it hits Saudi Arabia, this is America's, one of America's major oil supplies. At that point, you will have gasoline at the gas pump, $67. Stay there, stay gas. there, back in one minute. Lindsay, some of our AM and FM affiliates do not carry this little five-minute segment, but a lot of stations don't want to carry news. They want to have this segment filled, so I do it over the years. But I don't want you to get into what he took, what you, you were told about the Middle East, the rioting. It's admittedly engineered. What that's going to lead to, the double crossing of the Arabs, uh, and then what's going to happen with China, the big announcement, what's going to happen in the U.S., what it's going to do to the dollar from your source until we come back in the next segment. In this segment, I wanted to talk to you and just have you for new listeners recap the last three and a half years of stunningly accurate predictions that Mr. Fromm and uh, the other gentleman, Mr. 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 L, I'll leave it at that, uh, have told you. Uh, because I remember you said, yeah, the Middle East is going to be a diversion. It's going to trigger something bigger. I said, is it war? They just said, no, it'll be turmoil. I mean, so they told you that. Now you see it triggered. It's admitted the globalists have triggered it. People are like, well, these are dictators. Aren't you glad? The point is, why are the globalists triggering it? We're going to get into that and through all the key info coming up in the next segment. But recap what Mr. Fromm and the other gentleman told you in the last three, three and a half years. So that you know, the listening audience out there, Alex, that the, the elite know all of this in advance. Every bit of it is planned behind closed doors. I had no way of knowing this. I'll give you a few of the key pointers. Three years ago, I was called on the phone by one of my elitist friends, and he said to me very casually, uh, he said, Chaplain, the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. Everybody that played the futures, everyone that had any prognostic notice idea whatsoever. No, first you said, said it was going from 50 to 150 then you said it was going to go back down to 40 and it did. Yes, but everybody was saying it was going to 200 Even I myself was predicting that, even though I had not been told it. He said to me on the phone, it's going to from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. Within two months' time, it went actually to $134 a barrel. And I, I knew that my reputation was at stake. Alex was bold enough. And, and folks, listen, Alex Jones will put things on that nobody else will put on. There was some talk show host that wouldn't even allow me on their show to say it. They thought it was so ridiculous and outlandish. But I knew that they've never told me anything wrong in 35 years. And I said, Alex, I'd like to come on your show and tell the people that it's going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. Alex allowed me on his show to say it, even though people laughed at me. And some of you are laughing at me out there in the audience right now. Just keep right on laughing because you laugh last. I know what's going to happen between now and the end of 2012, and I hope you have sense enough to listen to me and to listen to everything that Alex is telling you because the elite have it in plan. So it did exactly what he said. Exactly. Two months later, it went to $1.50 a gallon at the gas pump. It went to $1.34 a gallon. Then, at the same time, he told me, and you, you keep watch this now, you'll see it happen. He said the price of crude oil for the next two to two and a half years is going to stay between seven and eighty dollars a barrel. Everybody again thought I was crazy. But I didn't wasn't the one that said it. The elitist told me that. And it did. It stayed exactly that. 
then I told you when it was going to start going back up again. Just about three to four months ago, I came on Alex's show, and I said, I have been told there's going to be a crisis in the Middle East. Now, folks, please listen to my wording. I did not say there was going to be a war with Iran. Alex, you, you remember me saying no, that. You, no, it's on record. You said it's going to be a crisis. I said just what they told me. I said there is going to be a crisis in the Middle East. They did not tell me it would be Egypt, and I didn't say Iran Okay, Lindsay, stop Egypt. there. we got to go to break. Let's come back where you left off, because that's perfect. In the segment before last, you left off there. Now you left off there again. Let's come back with a full audience and you know, have you recap the, the purposeful destabilization of the Middle East, the uh, plan to, to cheat the Arabs, and then the big developments in China and the U.S., the dollar, all of it. The big bombshell coming up next. We're going to lay out the future globalist program. Okay, thank you for joining us. Pastor Lindsey Williams worked in the board meetings with Atlantic Richfield and in meetings with other top oil companies. Just like in Congress or on an aircraft carrier, the chaplain is like an intermediary uh, and was able to see all this. He wrote a book about it. Since then, 30 years later, everything in that book, the energy non-crisis, is now out in the open. That They could have dozens of pipelines coming out of Alaska, supplying the entire United States for over 100 years. It's easily recoverable oil. It's there. They kept it. Uh, now, since then, he has these two sources, one a former CEO, and I know for new listeners have been listening the whole time here, like we've already heard this, I'm recapping for new listeners. People are tuning in, you know, in and out constantly. Then, starting about three and a half years ago, uh, Ken Fromm and the other fellow started telling him basically the same information that oil would go from $50 a barrel up to 150 Then people thought it would go to 200 His source said, no, now it's going to plunge down to 40 It went below 40 like 32, I saw it. Then they, uh, he said for two years, it's going to be uh, basically just gradually going up slowly. Enjoy yourselves. Go out and have plenty of gas. But in two years, get ready. We're now two years later. Four months ago, Lindsay says they're going to have a crisis in the Middle East. And I said, war? He said, no, my sources just said it's going to be in turmoil, but that that is a trigger and a distraction from China. Watch it. It's the big one. But they didn't go further. Now Mr. Fromm has died. The other source, it has gone all the way with the entire plan. And we can see the plan of deindustrialization, moving all the jobs to China. China, in the news today, secretly pressuring the U.S. government as holders of our debt to allow them to buy up U.S. companies and block SEC corruption probes and antitrust issues. This is about the globalists teaming up with China and muscling out the U.S., this is about the designed decline of the U.S., and Lindsay's going to lay it all out now. Lindsay, let's start back at the Middle East, the plan program there. That's admitted. Uh, where this is going, how it's going to unfold, you have the floor for the next uh, 10 minutes. The standard currency of the world is crude oil. Please write this down in your notes, and I hope you have a pencil and paper and you're taking notes today and you'll put it beside your calendar because... Barring divine intervention, the elite will do what you're about to hear. The standard currency of the world is crude oil. It is not the dollar. It's not the euro. It's not the one. It's not the pound. It's crude oil. Crude oil. Please put it down. It's the most important object out there. The Muslim Brotherhood are being supported by the elite of the world who have the crude oil in the palm of their hand. Please note this. What you saw happen in Egypt, what's happening right now in Libya, what is taking place in the United Arab Emirates, is going to spread throughout the entire Arab world. Most all of OPEC. Now, OPEC includes a few other nations beside the Arab world. But all over the Arab world, it's going to continue because they are being supported by the elite of the world. The elite of the world plan to double-cross the Arabs. I hope you, You've never heard this anywhere before. This will be so new to you until I'm sure you're going to be startled, as you have by many of the other things that these people have told me. Please note again, the Arab world, the Middle East in particular, OPEC in general, are going to be double-crossed by the elite of the world. And if any of the Arabs out there are listening to me, I hope your princes, your sheikhs and your sheikhs and the people of those countries will listen to you. Because 70 years ago, you were nothing but nomads, roaming the deserts riding camels. You're going back to that again. I know. 
and, and I, I must explain what the Muslim Brotherhood is doing later, but I won't take the time right now. Why, how are you going to be double-crossed? You remember that Mr. Kissinger went abroad in 1977 through 81 during the Carter administration, cut a deal with every then-producing major oil uh, country in the Middle East, and the deal was, we will buy your oil. We will no longer produce from America's oil fields. Oh, a few little, uh, a few little uh, wells here in Yonder. Yeah, we'll, we'll allow them to go, but, uh, but nothing big whatsoever. The North Slope of Alaska, we'll just tap a little bit of it, but we're not going to get the big ones. We will buy from you if you will do the following. Number one, you must take a certain portion of what we buy oil from you with and buy our Federal Reserve issues of key bills and securities. This, in turn, paid the interest on the national debt, which at that point they began to bring in their new world order, put America into the debt that is in today, and bring America down to the status of a third world country. It was all planned back as far back as I knew in 1971. They knew it a long time prior to that. Now, how are they going to double-cross the Arabs? The dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. Mark my words, this was given to me by them. It is prediction. Put it down. And whenever it does, what's going to happen to those billions and billions of dollars, maybe in some cases trillions of dollars, worth of key bills and Federal Reserve issues that have been sold to the oil-producing countries according to the deal that was cut by Kissinger in 77 through 81? What will happen to that paper? Please remember the previous show that I was on with Alex Jones. I was told if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. This should be a classical statement because it was told to me by Mr. Prom before he died. Chaplin, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And when the Muslim Brotherhood, supported today by the elite of the world, continue to cause conflict all over the Middle East as they have in Egypt and in Libya, and it will spread from one country to the other, mark my words, none of them will be exempt. And when it does, the oil will not be supplied from over there. The dollar, because when oil goes to $200 a barrel, the American economy is going to be so drastically affected, you think we have problems now financially, the dollar will collapse toward the end of 2012, and when it does, all of the paper, please, Folks, hear this, especially Arabs out there. The dollar collapses. The paper of the Federal Reserve will likewise do the same. And when it does, the double cross of the Arabs, which was started way back in 77, the double cross of the Arab world will take place. They will be so angry with us. You think that the, that the Muslims have, have a bone to pick with us right now. You haven't seen anything. Just wait till the dollar crashes. They're double-crossed. They lose their paper wealth. They become again what they were 50 to 60 years ago. And are you ready for what's going to happen at that point? This is the reason that Alex has allowed me on his show today, because I've just been told this a matter of, of, of well, it was hours when I talked with you last night, Alex, but now it's be a few days. I was told that at that point we will not be able to get our crude oil from the Middle East and many of the other OPEC oil-producing countries. And in turn, the elite plan to open America's own oil fields that they have known. They've known for 50 years that they were there. They knew about the North Slope of Alaska. They knew about Gull Island, which I recorded in my book, and they threatened me never to talk about it again. And I'm, I'm, Mr. Fromm's gone now, so I, I'm doing it and hoping that this this won't cause problems. And the, the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, they will open America's own oil fields, including the Bakken Reserve, including the reserve that is under the Rocky Mountains. Have you heard about it? Two trillion Barrels. It was announced on August the 8th, 2005. President Bush talked about it, but they have not produced it yet. All of these oil fields, there is going to be a mad rush to oil production in America because we cannot get it from abroad when the Arabs and OPEC are double-crossed and in turn... You are going to see America begin to produce from its own oil fields, but what's going to happen? 
By that time, you'll be paying 7 and $8 a gallon for gasoline, and it will be $200 a barrel. Our dollar will have already collapsed, and they will bring in, mark my words, a world currency. It is all a part of the new world order in order to accomplish what they want, Alex. Well, Lindsay, I mean, just looking at the news here, Gaddafi declares a revolt with tanks and uh, planes. Uh, he's defying the revolt with uh, tanks and planes in rambling speech, blames tyranny of U.S., free drugs for youth, what the CIA do in the 60s. Uh, he went on to say he will never leave uh, Libya. He will be a martyr at the end. White House has nothing to say. Muslim Brotherhood says kill Gaddafi. All they want is the power. Uh, again, they don't completely work for the globalists. They're just being used. Uh, continuing uh, intelligence agency uh, jamming TV signals. Uh, Gaddafi's blocking Al Jazeera into the country and over much of the Middle East with a powerful jammer saying that it's British intelligence, which a lot of reports show it is. And it's admitted, and even Medvedev in, in Russia is saying this, that this is staged in a destabilization program and that the Middle East could be in flames for years. Uh, and so this will be used as the excuse to start uh, to change the deal, to cheat the Arabs. Uh, you know, that, that's from the Arab perspective, uh, to stop propping up the dictators, to develop the fields here, uh, and uh, getting into uh, the uh, dollar being uh, phased out. More on the information uh, that the former oil company CEO told you on that front and the rising of China uh, to replace us. There will be no shortages whatsoever on grocery store shelves. Now, when I said this for the first time about nine months, I was laughed at. There were many of your survivalists out there, many of them my very personal friends, that said, Lindsay, you're crazy. We're going to have a shortage of food. I said, no, we're not. Why? I'd been told it. What are we all going to have a shortage of? The grocery store shelves will be full, but you're going to go hungry. Why are you going to go hungry? Not because there's a lack of groceries out there. Even with the cold that we've had that swept down into Mexico and Florida and other places that our vegetables are produced, uh, there's no shortage whatsoever on the grocery store shelves right now. Why not? The new world order can bring it in from anywhere in the world. What it's caused? It causes the prices to go up. Do you realize that in one week's time, garlic, a simple little thing like a, a garlic bulb, went up 100% last week alone? Do you realize the crude oil this morning went up eight dollars a barrel all right so stay going? there stay there we're going to come back and get back into the dollar situation in china and what's going to happen here williams on lindsay this segment's short but j j just boiling it down because you told me even more last night how the dominoes will fall the middle east then the oil price then the opening up for exploration did he give you dates then this rise of china who we now know is basically running our government even the associated press is reporting that using the, their debt they hold on us the cheating of the arabs break it down briefly for us time frame the end of 2012 you will see the dollar collapse so i've been told by the end of 2012 that means that the Arabs are going to be double-crossed by the end of 2012, sometimes prior to that. Whenever they are, we don't get the oil supply from the Middle East. This is going to be a major crisis time for America, because not only is it a crisis for you at the gas pump who are having to drive your vehicle to work every day, but it's going to be a crisis for the truckers, the airlines, and a major crisis for the military of the United States of America. And that's the reason that they're so concerned about the Fifth Fleet right now over near around Dubai and that part of the world. So you have a time frame of the end of 2012. One person said to me this morning, they said, Chaplin, it's going to take place in 2011. It was a talk show host called me before your show, Alex. And I said, no, it's not. I said, I've been given the time at the end of 2012. You'd better be ready. They will do this by then. China is the big one. China just made an agreement with Russia. Where, now, th this puts China out of the picture altogether as far as crude oil and natural gas is concerned. China just cut an agreement with Russia. Russia last year became the number one oil supplier of the world. Saudi Arabia took a second place because of Russia's super deep wells, which I've dealt with that subject before on Alex's show. And as a result, China now has agreed with Russia to buy all of the crude oil and all of the natural gas that they want. China will not, do you hear this, 
China will not be affected by the Middle East crisis because they are now getting their oil from Russia. We will not be able to get it there because they're supplying so much to China. And as a result, we will have to turn to our own oil fields here in America. A time frame that you must be aware of is the end by the end. That means you'd better be ready a long time before. If you want groceries, you better go to the grocery store and buy six months to a year's supply right now because the dollar is going to collapse in such a manner. See, when crude oil went up this morning, $8 a barrel, it wasn't the crude oil that went up. It was the purchasing power of the dollar that went down. And when that garlic, which went up 100% in one week, I know, simple little garlic bulb, you housewives can see this. You went to the grocery store, it went up 100% in one week. What did that do? It wasn't the garlic that changed. There's still as many cloves in that garlic as there ever was. It was the dollar that you purchased the garlic with that is going down in purchasing power, regardless of what the Federal Reserve is telling you. You had better go and do what you're going to do and do it now and get something for your household and prepare for what's going to happen. China will not be affected by this fuel crisis because they're getting it out of Russia and they're not using the American dollar for the All right, so the trade. globalists are on the move. I want to finish up with this rise of China decline of the U.S. and then the rebirth of the U.S. Let's finish up with that and then calls. Uh, we're getting honored to have Lindsey Williams here with us. I want to get to calls and not shortchange them. Uh, but, uh, Lindsey, uh, finishing up with uh, the time frame, you said they're going to rise China up. Then they're going to start the exploration here in the next few years. Then uh, you're going to see a big decline in the U.S. Uh, as they suck everything out of the economy. Everything is based on petrol based on oil, and, and and this is going to be a vertical integration, a consolidation of wealth. But then your source said that later they're going to build the U.S. back up. What's the time frame on that? I uh, did not give a time frame on that. It will all depend on how they're able to open up what they want to open up, uh, the advancement of China. Keep in mind that if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And this is the way that they will cross double-cross the Arabs. Remember also that George Bush Sr., Daddy Bush, was the ambassador to China prior to that time. Please go back and look this up and get some information on it. Research it for yourself. I don't have time to give it today, even though we'll do a whole section on this. George Bush Sr., Daddy Bush, the great Mr. New World Order, was the ambassador to China from the United States of America years ago. Prior to his being ambassador, China was a closed society. The Great Wall of China divided them from everybody, and China did not do business with the outside world. George Bush Sr., Daddy Bush, opened up China to the world and made it the great power that it is today, and he was the first one to announce that there would be a new world order. And the globalists have done everything they can to position the industry, the power, uh, to have China be the owner of our debt, teamed up with the private Federal Reserve, the second biggest owner, and now... We covered it earlier. If you guys can find that AFP or AP headline, China uh, secretly using influence on the SEC, on the Treasury Department, on the federal government to let them buy up U.S. companies, to let them create oligopolies, to have the SEC leave them alone, to allow them to basically buy this country up. Uh, there's AFP. Cables show China used debt holdings uh, to press U.S. Leaked diplomatic cables uh, vividly show China's willingness to uh, translate its massive holdings of U.S. debt into political influence on issues ranging from Taiwan sovereignty to Washington's financial policy uh, dealing with uh, Chinese companies in the U.S. And it just goes on and on and on. I mean, this this is the globalist plan. We've been made dependent. We're being taken over. Is this not high treason by the globalist, Lindsay? It positively is. And the thing that the average American doesn't realize is that when we moved our industry to China, for instance, General Motors, whom you, as a taxpayer, bailed out in the United States of America. They were bankrupt. General Motors and Chrysler, you bailed them out. General Motors will sell more automobiles in China this year than they sell in the United States of America. Now, what happens when General Motors, Chrysler, uh, Caterpillar, the biggest one on the New York Stock Exchange, Caterpillar, 
whenever these companies move to China and build these multi-million dollar, billion dollar plants, do you realize that the agreement with China is that, yes, we'll let you come to China, yes, we'll give you cheap labor, but you must give us all of your patents. Did you hear this? Boeing, when they moved to China, they had to give all of their patents. Their patent rights. Well, Clinton gave them, along with Rumsfeld, when he was in private companies in the mid-'90s, uh, the ICBM secrets, uh, the uh, submarine-launched Trident secrets. This is a total sellout. I, now, we've got Muhammad in the Middle East, and I want to uh, go to him uh, here in just a moment and, and other callers. Uh, but, Lindsay, this is too, I promise to go to calls. I, I'm going to have to get you back up um, sometime this week or next week uh, well, just, Alex, just Alex, to talk really about solutions. Yeah, really, I have only covered a fraction. I mean, I, I haven't even told of the time that Ken Fromm was fired because of my book, Energy and Non-Crisis. I haven't even dealt with the only person that ever told this story apart from me, which was, by the way, please go and research this. In American Opinion, back in 1980, Alan Stang came to Alaska after Ken Fromm had been fired. Ken was so mad that he gave him everything. It's the only time it's ever been written, and he called him horse's mouth. And then what happened after that? Read the book, The Three Sisters. I mean, we've even skimmed the And, and you today. got from to go on stage at a public event in California. The oil execs, the CEO and another came in and sat down, totally freaked from out. See, this has all been on record. He just didn't want you to get into it publicly with the new info. Now that he's died, you can. Uh, it's just so incredible. But let's go to phone calls. Uh, let's talk to Brother Rakal in Cairo, Egypt. And we've confirmed his number. That's where he's calling from. Uh, Mr. Rakal, tell us what's going on. How are you doing, Alex? Uh, it's good. To, it's good to be talking to you. I've been a long time listener while I was in the states. How are you doing today? I'm good. So, what are you witnessing there in Cairo, and what's your view on what Lindsey Williams is talking about? Well, let me say this. I want to say this to all the people in the states. Uh, if they didn't know, you got almost a hundred thousand Americans living in, in in Egypt and frequently visit Egypt. And I'll say this. Not one American was harmed, a citizen, neither of, none of us. And it was surprising to hear uh, the families who were concerned about their, their people, the way America was portraying the, what was happening in Egypt. And I want to say this, Alex. I want to go into what the Egyptians are saying here. Yeah, what are the, I mean, do the Egyptians know this is a staged event? Absolutely. Let me tell you, Alex, the Egyptians know nothing about a group called the, uh, the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood. They, have, they know nothing of this. A matter of fact, they say, they say it's, it's like CIA or American. Okay? That's number one. Number two, I would like to say this to all the people out there. Um... The majority of people who was in this so-called Liberty Square, the majority of these people, Alex, had no idea about a revolution. They was invited there for they were, they were busted, paid to go there. And if you know, if, if you ever, uh, if you ever frequent the Middle East, you you'll know that these Arab people who are family, they frequent places together. They'll be outside all day, hundreds at a time. So it's nothing to get a few thousand people in a square. No, no, they said millions, and it was 50,000, according to experts that looked at the crowd. But Google admits they were there for the CIA. They admit that they sent an alberity the week before it all started. Again, we're not saying Mubarak was good. The point is they are admittedly overthrowing it as the first domino, as we said a month ago, to put the Middle East in fire. Uh, so, so the Egyptian people know what's going on. Hey, another thing I want to bring out, Alex, and, and you're right on there, and I want to say this, Alex. One thing that the Western world is not saying about Mubarak is the fact that there's many Egyptians who wanted Mubarak to stay. I'll tell you this. Mubarak is starkly against the eugenics program and has been on record for this. For no, they got mad at him in the early 90s uh, when he wouldn't start sterilizing people. 
Exactly. And and the babies are healthy there. The people are healthy there. And I'll tell you, the water is not the cleanest in the world, but these people are fairly healthy compared to any other people in the Western world. I'll tell you this, they're very family-oriented. And on top of that, there's another thing that people didn't know there. And, I, and it surprised me while I was here, Alex, is that there's many Americans, after leaving the military, come to the Middle East, uh, get contracts, and work within the military, make big, big money over there. And Americans come over and actually work under these people in the Egyptian military. So this, there's a lot of facets to this, that a lot of brothers and sisters, and, and yourself, you're right on point. For you, for you not to be in the Middle East, you may have some good contacts because you're not in the Middle East, and, and obviously you're able to articulate what's going on even in the Middle East. But I want to say this. Americans have no idea what, what's, what's going on on the outside of America. And you don't know until you, until you go someplace no, else. No, exactly. But, but uh, any comments on what Lindsey Williams is saying? Uh, you, a matter of fact, uh, um, I want to thank Lindsey because the last thing he said is key. Uh, uh, the last thing he said about what's going on with the oil and how they're going to double-cross them and let me tell you all the egyptians and the other middle easterns knew that it was staged and now they're starting to realize that they were props in america in the western world's game and it's not going to end out like they think it is these people <laughs> these people have some level of integrity and fight in them and and i'll tell you when they find out that they were used it's going to be all-out anarchy on another level. I don't think the Western world can control it. All right. No, I, I certainly, the dominoes were already there, folks being angry. Now they've triggered it. it, it Google, I mean, here uh, is on record. And now Google just admits they're this government front. It is so incredible. Thank you for the call, uh, brother. Uh, recall from Cairo. Uh, Lindsey Williams, your comments on what he was saying. Well, I am so glad that he confirmed the fact that the Arabs realize they've been, they are going to be double-crossed. They, they aren't double-crossed yet. The big double-cross has yet to take place whenever the dollar collapses and they lose all the paper that they've invested, invested in for many, many years, and they become literally paupers overnight. And to be clear, this is going to double-cross Americans and others, but we see China and others moving away from the dollar right now. But your source is saying end of 2012, the dollar is going to not be the world reserve currency. What else did he say about that? Any specifics? Yes, by the end of 2012, you'll see this double-cross with the OPEC oil-producing countries. They, in turn, will literally become enraged with America. The call of just from Egypt was exactly right. America will not be able to control it. Our president has made some drastic mistakes. But that's part of the plan is enraging them. That way the oil gets shut off. That's exactly right. And then the price of crude oil will be up to $200 a barrel so that the oil companies, the elite of the world, as I call them, can become, you think they're rich now. You haven't seen anything. Wait until oil gets to $200 a barrel. And they produce it from America. Oh, it's a giant tax directly to the globalists. It's, it's a giant tax directly to the globalists. Let's t uh, it's incredible. Damon in South Carolina, you're on the air with Lindsey Williams. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? Um, I've got a couple of quick points to make to you. First of all, I was just over in Europe. Um, flew over to the former Soviet Union, Republic of Belarus. Stopped by in uh, Austria on the way. Gas there, get this, okay, is 12.95 euros a liter, okay, which was all going down with the Egyptian crisis. That's over $18 American for a liter of gas over there. And gas has always been more expensive over there anyways, but that's going to go through the roof when that happens. And in Belarus, it was twice as much for a liter. Well, well, Damon, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm going to put you back on hold. We're going to skip this network break, so stations should carry it. I misunderstood. We had two callers from the Middle East, not just Brother Recall from Cairo, uh, but uh, Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad, where are you calling us from? Well, I, I'm currently in the European country, but I cannot tell you. Okay, your phone is really bad. Sir, sir can, you, uh, can you talk slowly for us because your phone is really bad? Where, where are you calling us from?
Hello. Yes, there's a delay. Can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you better. Where are can you, you calling us from? Yes, I, I have, you know, recently come from Bahrain, and I am recent, I'm, I'm currently in the, Euro, the European country, but I'm not going to disclose. Because okay, you're in a European country, you recently came from? Uh, in in Bad. Okay, so you recently came from the Middle East. Go ahead. Bahrain. Bahrain, okay. Yes. So what I, I, what I not want to tell you is uh, the civilian is really correct. But, you know, I, I like to, you know, ask him from the front of you because, you know, he, he is, you know, very well, he, he's, a, he's, you know, a religious person. Can, can he, you know, tell us, if I look at, you know, my Islamic religious script, uh, the time for you coming is really near. And, and most of the people are waiting for that. And this is, you know, the time when the things are going to be set up for everything. So there is a religious point in all this. You know, can... can no, I understand. Uh, can what do you think, you know, sir, sir, what do you think about the demonstrations? Do you think they're staged? What's your view of what Lindsey Williams has said? Look, Alex, there is no doubt it is staged. There is no doubt it is staged because it is a progression in of 10 years. In 19, you know, the the the, the red were, were you know incised for Pakistan, and you know the communism work. Then, you know, well, listen, Muhammad, 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 I appreciate you trying to call. I'm going to put you on hold and see if your Skype gets better or whatever internet connection you're using from 6,000 miles away to get through to us. Well, we're going to see if it gets better in a moment and try to go back to you. But there's another call from a Middle Easterner, a Muslim, saying, of course they know it's staged, Lindsay. Yes. Da Damon, while his phone might get better, let's go back to you. Uh, so, 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 yes, you're saying you're already seeing the gas prices in Europe explode, Damon. Yeah, my wife's family is all over there, and uh, they've seen a dramatic increase in fuel over there. I think the deal from Russia with China has affected that because they're not sending as much down in. So, of course, you have the whole supply and demand issue. And now with this issue with Libya, which, as you said, support uh, supplies a lot of the oil to the European um, Union uh, countries, that's going to get cut off. So you're going to see a major issue there. Um, and it was just, it was all just kind of, you know, coming, you know, on as I was over there for two and a half weeks um, from July to the beginning of August. Did you hear Lindsay, as many listeners did four months ago, say this was all coming and lay it all out? Yeah, I've, I listen to you every day. So I've, I've called you, you and I have talked to many times. I wanted to, to kind of um, uh, couch on what uh, Lindsay said, I wanted to point out two other things. I was the guy that was going to get the uh, optical um, stimulated uh, luminescence to go through the x-ray scanners at the airport when I'm flying over. I told you about that. Well, guess what? They shut down all the x-ray scanners. And I think what has to do with this, what Lindsay's saying, is that they're trying to placate the American public for the time being. So they're now kind of, you know... No, that's right. I talked to some airline pilots um because somebody in Hollywood flew a private jet out there to pick me up and fly me out there a few weeks ago. And I was talking to them because they also flew for um, you know, major airlines. And they said, look, they've turned the scanners off at LAX. They're still off. And, and I'm hearing that most places they've basically turned them off because they know it was spurring a rebellion. But in Austria, in the Vienna airport, they had police dogs everywhere. But in the former Soviet Union where we were, they've heard nothing about our problems with the TSA or the X-ray um, yeah. backscatter scanners. And well, whatnot. Damon, I got to jump, but I appreciate your call. Uh, yeah, the, the, the controllers don't want to give us an issue that we can come together because liberals don't like the TSA. Conservatives don't like it. They want to make everything left, right, so we fight with each other. This was a perfect issue that I launched over a year ago, seeing that it was the perfect issue to get people together, and that's why they're backing off. But I guess that's the good news, Lindsay. If we have this information and get it out, you know, the globalists can be stopped. They can, and uh, it's not too late. They've, their timeline is the end of 2012. We do have time, and programs like yours, Alex, are the only hope that we've got of getting this information out. And when the people know the issues, they, they know the entire picture, then they can do something about it. You, you must take care of certain things in your household immediately. Now, we're going to do a final segment coming up here. we got five minutes left to take calls and five more minutes. But I wanted just to point out, if people do want to get pre-ordered, that DVD should be done the next week to see it all in one place without you know, news breaks and my interruptions and calls and things. Uh, though this is interesting and informative as well, you can go to prophecyclub.com and uh, pre-order 
And the name of the new production breaking this down is Lindsay Williams, The Middle East, the rest of the story. We'll give you the number coming up in the final segment. Uh, but right now, uh, let's go ahead and go back to the calls as promised. Delta in New Jersey. Delta, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Hey, buddy. Hey, so a uh, question is, uh, I mean, this seems typical uh, playbook that they you know, create the chaos and they play both sides and they, uh, you know, create their order out of chaos. Are they, are they, besides the Middle East, do they plan on spreading this to here in the U.S.? Oh, absolutely. They're going to bring in economic things. They're going to cause turmoil here. That's why they got the police state in place as the solution, because when people riot and burn stuff up, that makes the economy get worse. Then the globalists get to buy it up for pennies on the dollar and then be the heroes rolling out their federal police and the rest of it. As Lindsay said, the globalists like to buy things when they're at rock bottom prices. Lindsay? Yes, everything you've just said is true. I haven't even had time to get into this part of it all, but what you're going to see in the Middle East is you're going to see a repeat of Egypt, you're going to see a repeat of Libya all over the Middle East. One of the last ones will be Saudi Arabia, and no telling what will happen there. At that point, you're going to see the crude oil prices now. It will spread to America. We just had a very, very small idea of this in Wisconsin this past week. I know nothing about whether that was incited or not. I do not think it was. But you'll see a repeat of problems across America, just as you're going to see in the Middle East. It well, they're shutting down half the, the schools also. in Detroit. Many cities are laying off more than half their police and sheriff's deputies. And we haven't even begun to get into this depression yet. That's exactly right. It is going to spread to America from over there. Folks, please be prepared. You definitely need to do everything that you're going to do and do it immediately. I don't know how to say any more, Alex, except that, yes, what's in the Middle East will spread to America except in a different form. All right, let's jam in one more call before this hour ends. We're going to come back. Uh, let's talk to uh, to Fred in Ohio. Fred, you're on the air. Yes, uh, good afternoon. But since we know that we've been double-crossed and the Arabs know they've been double-crossed, and we've got a $25 million bounty on Ben Laden and others. Why haven't these dictators and kings and Arabs put bounties on these elitists that have done all of this to us? Well, because then a military would invade them overnight. The globalists are very aware of that danger of people striking back. That's why when Saddam Hussein you know, talked about going after George Herbert Walker Bush, you saw what happened. It's because they know the globalists run our country, the nuclear weapons, the assassination teams. I think you answered your own question. And I'm not calling for violence. That's a game the globalists, with all their security and the rest of it, want to play. They want us to get violent, so they have an excuse to crack down. They're spurring the violence in the Middle East. All you guys that call for violence constantly and tell me I'm a wimp because I don't do it, you know, and, and, and they always do it with, with uh, anonymity. I'm not saying Fred's bad. I'm saying people that, Alex, you ought to call for an uprising. You ought to run out and start shooting people, and they're doing it on message boards. And if they're not feds, they should worry because I've seen folks that aren't feds go to jail for that. Uh, I'm here to get the word out. It's my country. I, I deserve a republic. You deserve it. Our forefathers fought for it, and we need to fight with ideas and physically defend ourselves. We'll be right back. Lindsey Williams will be back live tomorrow in the third hour, and we have some other important guests on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. One of them a big surprise. I'll just leave it uh, at that, keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, but uh, taking a few final calls here. Uh, well, well, briefly, do you want to comment on the guy who was talking about violence? Oh, positively. What you're seeing happen right now in Libya, I'm sure you must have heard, even on the national news this morning, from airplanes, they're shooting at civilians. Uh, Qaddafi says, I positively will not step down under any circumstances whatsoever. As a result, oil prices went up so much this morning. Libya sells 1.6 million barrels a day, and right now Tripoli is burning. So do you think that they wouldn't... All of this is supported by the elite, what the Muslim Brotherhood is doing. It'll go from nation to nation, and you'll see civilians fired on. This is an atrocity. It breaks my heart to see that this has to happen in order to bring about the plan of the elite. Well, we'll talk about solutions, too, tomorrow and some other areas we didn't have time to get into that are key to this whole discussion. Brian in Utah, you're on the air, Brian. Alex and Pastor Williams, thank you both for your service and uh, to your audience. We must make this interview and the uh, related interviews that uh, Pastor Williams has done go viral through the college campuses, the police, our military especially. 
and uh, our local and state officials. This is the globalist over. plan teamed up with China to bring us down. Absolutely. And, um, you know, as you were speaking of as well, we the people of the United States must become peacemakers to the Arabs and uh, to the, the Muslim people. You know, we have to uh, let the Arabs know that we've also been double-crossed and our military has been double-crossed by the global parasite empire scams. And, um, you, know, and uh, you know, our military has been double-crossed by our treacherous politicians and their, uh, uh, their generals. Now, you spoke of Henry Kissinger, and I'd heard, I don't know if it was you several years ago or someone, had revealed some of this information about Henry Kissinger being responsible for this deal with the Arabs about oil. But, it, but there was a little bit more focus on the military-industrial complex aspect of the deal with military and bases and things like that. You, we'll get more into that tomorrow. In fact, I'll write a note to do that. Lindsay, any comments for Brian in Utah? We only got about right. a minute left. And tomorrow, please have your pencils and paper ready, even your recorders. Please turn them on, and you'll want to get from I'm going to give tomorrow the, the amount of oil that has just been announced to me by one of the elite that is in America, which they're going to open up. I'll tell you where the fields are. I want to read you the amount of oil that's there from the latest statistics. Some of it has been put in the congressional record. You can check it out for yourself. Absolutely. We'll also get into solutions. We'll get into Fromm and his history. Uh, we'll also get into that question about the military uh, bases. In 30 seconds, Lindsay, the, the uh, military base agreements with the Arabs in, 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 in the 70s. Our military is in, in dire straits right now. Uh, they, when this happens, a lack of fuel. Can you imagine how you run an airplane without jet fuel? How do you run a ship without diesel? Uh, it's it's going to be a startling... ...because of the executive status accorded to him as chaplain... He was given access to information documented in his eye-opening book, The Energy Non-Crisis, unfortunately out of print. Because to understand what's happening now, you've got to read that book. And everything in that book from 1980 that caused oil execs to get fired, you name it, now it's all plain view admitted. After numerous public speaking engagements in western states, certain government officials or concerned individuals urged Williams to put into print what he saw and heard, stating that they felt this information was vital to national security. And actually, Ken Fromm actually helped him rewrite the book. He wrote part of it. That was the Atlantic Richfield head of operations. Mr. Williams firmly believes that whoever controls energy controls the economy, thus the energy non-crisis. Now, Ken Fromm died back around Christmas of cancer. We can now say it's Ken Fromm. I knew it was Ken Fromm. So did uh, other people like Dr. Stan Monteith. Monteith's the type to not, even though he believes Williams to go off what he's saying, he went and figured it out and called him himself. He's, he's also... Talked to the other guy who's living, was a former oil company CEO, Big Three. And there's been a strategic plan. And, and as we go to Lindsay, I want to break it down to you this way. But Zygmunt Brzezinski writes books saying they work in 25 and 50 year plans. David Rockefeller, in his uh, book he wrote five years ago, where he admits they want world government, I forget the name of it. Will you Google uh, David Rockefeller's uh, autobiography? I, want to put it on screen. It's a side shot of him on the cover. Um, we've got it back there, but it, on page 435, it, he talks about how and how at a time in the future they would shift to the global currency. That's in Trilateral Commission documents from 1975. But people would laugh at Williams about that. Now all of of the previous part of the plan is public. He's going to give you the rest of the plan and what the globalists are telling him is, is going to unfold. Now remember, Lindsey Williams was here in October, in November, in December. And in October, on record, and we wrote articles about it, oil in the next year, six months to a year, to go to 150 to 200, turmoil in the Middle East, not even so much war. He said, they told me turmoil, that's on record, destabilization campaign, and that that would then lead to, to quote, China, watch the big one. Now the other big oil company, former CEO, is giving him the full breakdown of this program in the Middle East, what it's going to do in the U.S., what it's going to do in Asia, and the rest of the globalist blueprint and layout for what is about to happen in the next several years and the decade uh, preceding it or following it. 
And so now, Lindsey Williams, I'm going to attempt to give you the floor. Um, and in, in fact, you're going to be hosting the show, uh, at least for this segment, the next. Uh, I'll take you out at break. But I'm going to actually go in the control room, only way I can control myself. And I'm going to be in there taking notes on points and questions I have for you. But I sat there for 30, 45 minutes with you last night and just shut up while you talked. And it was 10 times more powerful than anything we've ever done on the radio before. Lay it out. Let's start at the beginning. Alex, you're a gentleman. Go, Shell, Standard Oil, of course, which is a Rockefeller family, and Chevron had their beginning at Spindletop in 1901. This set the stage for the beginning of some things that would revolutionize the entire world and the use of crude oil and energy. Then in 1903 came Henry Ford, the first assembly line automobile in America, and then a man by the name of Mercedes in Germany built the first assembly line German-produced automobile. Now, at that time, American oil was 25 cents a gallon or less. And our economy was booming beyond everything the world had ever known. Oil was discovered in the Arab Middle East world. Now, keep in mind that prior to the time that oil was discovered after 1903 in the Arab world, that the Arabs were nothing but nomads roaming the deserts riding camels. But 60 years ago, the Arabs began to, for the first time in many, many centuries, to come to the forefront. This brings us up to where we are now. And as Alex has suggested, I want to just cover a few pointers, and then I'll go back and take each one of them individually so that you can know the intricate parts of it. Uh, Ken Fromm of Atlantic Ridgefield. This is Standard Oil. Of course, you recognize ARCO, Atlantic Richfield Standard Oil Company, uh, one of America's greats back in those early days. And the the Yes, we're going to get rid of sovereignty. Yes, we're going to do this. But they talk about 25 and 50 year plans. And an example of that, because the general public has been taught, oh, Wall Street thinks in quarters. No, they get you to think in quarters. So you're blind to the larger geopolitical, neo feudalistic, neo mercantile system that is the New World Order. But in the 70s was a key catalyst for the next 50 year plan. That's when these decisions were made. And I've read Rockefeller, I've read Kissinger, I've read Brzezinski, basically say almost everything but in a veiled way that Lindsay's been told. That's the key. I can verify all this separately. Just Williams is directly talking to these folks. Now, and the info Lindsay gives us mirrors what we get from inside Bilderberg. But here's an example. I'm listening to WOAI this weekend. And they had a newscast about the 50-year water plan for Texas with the federal and state government and how we were 20-something years into the last plan and they're going to reassess it and launch a new 50-year plan off the old plan for, for uh, water wells, reservoirs, desalinization plants on the coast, on and on and on, and, and how the, the federal government's doing tests right now with desalinization of saltwater aquifers as a test as part of the 50-year plan. We are on 50-year time frames with subsets of 25, where sometimes they readjust or reassess. And so talking to Williams last night, I'm going to give him the floor here in a moment, when he briefed me on this, everything he was saying, again, was already public intelligence, but they were filling in the missing pieces. What Williams wrote about in 1980, about the secret deals with Kissinger and the Arabs to buy T-bills. Thank you so very much. Crude oil this morning is up $8 a barrel. Libya, the capital city, Tripoli, is burning. The capital building in Libya is on fire right now. Gaddafi is in power since 1969. And this morning, light, sweet crude oil is $108 a barrel. I have been told that it's going to 150 to 200 I would think that 200 would be more like it. Libya has shut off all of its present oil sales. It says it will carry no more contracts. 1.6 million barrels of oil per day go to Europe, not to America, but to Europe. This is going to drastically affect America because now Europe oil supplies have got to come from somewhere else. 
I would say that the Middle East is pretty much uh, number one item right now. It's going to go to Iran, and it's going to go. The, the crisis is going into Saudi Arabia. So let me begin, as I have been told by the people that have given me information over these years, as Alex has just said. I want to start from the beginning so you can understand because this is very involved. In 1901, the first, what should we say, gusher of oil in the United States of America took place in Beaumont, Texas. It was called Spindle Top. It went up 200 feet. At that point, the major oil companies were formed. They didn't ex exist before 1901. Texas. Because of the executive status accorded to him as chaplain, he was given access to information documented in his eye-opening book, The Energy Non-Crisis, unfortunately out of print. Because to understand what's happening now, you got to read that book. And everything in that book from 1980 that caused oil execs to get fired, you name it, now it's all plain view admitted. After numerous public speaking engagements in western states, certain government officials or concerned individuals urged Williams to put into print what he saw and heard, stating that they felt this information was vital to national security. And actually, Ken Fromm actually helped him rewrite the book. He wrote part of it. That was the Atlantic Richfield head of operations. Mr. Williams firmly believes that whoever controls energy controls the economy, thus the energy non-crisis. Now, Ken Fromm died back around Christmas of cancer. We can now say it's Ken Fromm. I knew it was Ken Fromm. So did uh, other people like Dr. Stan Monteith. Monteith's the type to not, even though he believes Williams to go off what he's saying, he went and figured it out and called him himself. He's, he's also talked to the other guy who's living, was a former oil company CEO, big three. And there's been a strategic plan. And, and as we go to Lindsay, I want to break it down to you this way. But Zygmunt Brzezinski writes books saying they work in 25 and 50 year plans. David Rockefeller, in his uh, book he wrote five years ago, where he admits they want world government. I forget the name of it. Will you Google uh, David Rockefeller's uh, autobiography? I want to put it on screen. It's a side shot of him on the cover. Um, we've got it back there. But it, on page 400 and what, 35, it, he talks about how, yes, we're going to get rid of sovereignty. Yes, we're going to do this. But they talk about 25 and 50-year plans. And an example of that, because the general public has been taught, oh, Wall Street thinks in quarters. No, they get you to think in quarters, so you're blind to the larger geopolitical, neo-feudalistic, neo-mercantile system that is the New World Order. But in the 70s was a key catalyst for the next 50 years to quote China, watch the big one. Now the other big oil company, former CEO, is giving the full breakdown of this program in the Middle East, what it's going to do in the U.S., what it's going to do in Asia, and the rest of the globalist blueprint and layout for what is about to happen in the next several years and the decade uh, preceding it or following it. And so now, Lindsey Williams, I'm going to attempt to give you the floor. Um, and in, in fact, you're going to be hosting the show, uh, at least for this segment, the next, uh, I'll take you out at break, but I'm going to actually go in the control room. Only way I can control myself. And I'm going to be in there taking notes on points and questions I have for you. But I sat there for 30, 45 minutes with you last night and just shut up while you talked. And it was 10 times more powerful than anything we've ever done on the radio before. Lay it out. Let's start at the beginning. Alex, you're a gentleman. Thank you so very much. Crude oil this morning is up $8 a barrel. Libya, the capital city, Tripoli, is burning. The capital building in Libya is on fire right now. Gaddafi is in power since 1969. And this morning, light, sweet crude oil is $108 a barrel. I have been told that it's going to 150 to 200. I would think that 200 would be more like it. Libya has shut off all of its present oil sales. It says it will carry no more contracts. 1.6 million barrels of oil per day go to Europe, not to America, but to Europe. This is going to drastically affect America because now Europe oil supplies have got to come from somewhere else. I would say that the Middle East is pretty much uh, number one item right now. It's going to go to Iran, 
and it's going to go. This is Standard Oil. Of course, you recognize Arco, Atlantic Richfield Standard Oil Company, uh, one of America's greats back in those early days. And the the the, the different oil companies, uh, Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, and Chevron, basically divided up the, the Arab world. And each one of them took a country and said, we will go and produce the oil fields in that country. The Arabs didn't have the money to produce them. And Mr. Ken Fromm was given the job by Atlantic Richfield of producing the oil field in Kuwait, Dubai, and that part of the world. Ken Fromm is a gentleman who has given me so much information over the years. We've spent hours and hours together talking about what is happening in the Arab world, and which I'll go back and give in detail later. Now, about 1977 through 81 was the Carter administration. You'll remember that the... Um, the Secretary of State was Mr. Henry Kissinger. He traveled abroad to every major oil-producing country at that time and tried to cut them a deal. I will go into that deal that he cut and why it is so significant to what's happening in America right now. Because at that point, we began the indebtedness of the United States of America by a design plan, and I'm so glad that Alex mentioned the 50-year cycle because this is exactly what we are going through at this time. Uh, I had not thought of that, but Alex, you're right, and I have heard this in many places. At this point, OPEC uh, had an agreement, and there was every nation in OPEC, every major oil-producing country in OPEC, uh, agreed to Henry Kissinger's deal with the exception of two. One was Iraq, and that's the reason that Iraq had to be conquered and uh, taken out. And the next one was Iran. Iran has had every kind of problem imaginable because they would not go along because the crisis is going into Saudi Arabia. So let me begin, as I have been told by the people that have given me information over these years, as Alex has just said, I want to start from the beginning so you can understand because this is very involved. In 1901, the first, what should we say, gusher of oil in the United States of America took place in Beaumont, Texas. It was called Spindle Top. It went up 200 feet. At that point, the major oil companies were formed. They didn't ex exist before 1901. Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, of course, which is a Rockefeller family, and Chevron had their beginning at Spindle Top in 1901. This set the stage for the beginning of some things that would revolutionize the entire world and the use of crude oil and energy. Then in 1903 came Henry Ford, the first assembly line automobile in America, and then a man by the name of Mercedes in Germany built the first assembly line German-produced automobile. Now, at that time, American oil was 25 cents a gallon or less. And our economy was booming beyond everything the world had ever known. Oil was discovered in the Arab Middle East world. Now, keep in mind that prior to the time that oil was discovered after 1903 in the Arab world, that the Arabs were nothing but nomads roaming the deserts riding camels. But 60 years ago, the Arabs began to, for the first time in many, many centuries, to come to the forefront. This brings us up to where we are now. And as Alex has suggested, I want to just cover a few pointers, and then I'll go back and take each one of them individually so that you can know the intricate parts of it. Uh, Ken from of Atlantic Ridgefield. Plan. That's when these decisions were made. And I've read Rockefeller, I've read Kissinger, I've read Brzezinski basically say almost everything but in a veiled way that Lindsay's been told. That's the key. I can verify all this separately. Just Williams is directly talking to these folks. Now, and the info Lindsay gives us mirrors what we get from inside Bilderberg. But here's an example. I'm listening to WOAI this weekend. And they had a newscast about the 50-year water plan for Texas with the federal and state government and how we were 20-something years into the last plan and they're going to reassess it and launch a new 50-year plan off the old plan for, for uh, water wells, reservoirs, desalinization plants on the coast, 
on and on and on, and and how the, the federal government's doing tests right now with desalinization of saltwater aquifers as a test as part of the 50-year plan. We are on 50-year time frames with subsets of 25, where sometimes they readjust or reassess. And so talking to Williams last night, I'm going to give him the floor here in a moment, when he briefed me on this, everything he was saying, again, was already public intelligence, but they were filling in the missing pieces. What Williams wrote about in 1980, about the secret deals with Kissinger and the Arabs to buy T-bills, and how at a time in the future they would shift to the global currency. That's in Trilateral Commission documents from 1975. But people would laugh at Williams about that. Now all of, of the previous part of the plan is public. He's going to give you the rest of the plan and what the globalists are telling him is, is going to unfold. Now remember, Lindsey Williams was here in October, in November, in December. And in October, on record, we wrote articles about it, oil in the next year, six months to a year, to go to 150 to 200, turmoil in the Middle East, not even so much war. He said they told me turmoil. That's on record. Destabilization campaign. And that that would then lead to 